Hey, my movie maniacs, welcome to the final cut. Yes, that's right, this seems to be the season of horror films, yet season of great horror films? Well, time was still waiting. Uh, the jury's still out on that, actually. So let's take a look at The Last Exorcism Part 2. Now, we get Ashley Bell back as Nell Switzer, who is trying to carry on a normal life after the events of the first one, you know, giving whole birth to the demonic child and all that. Uh, well, the demon that plagued her in the first one is back, but he's even got bigger plans for her, and we get to see how she deals with this and fights this demon that wants her so badly. Ah! Last Exorcism 2. Well, first off, you gotta love the title. It's almost like uh, Haunting in Connecticut 2, The Ghosts of Georgia, or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, two completely locations. Last Exorcism Part 2. Is it part 2 to the last? I thought the last? You know, you get what I'm going for. Anyway, this film tossed the found footage angle that they had in the uh, first one, which I really enjoyed, which is, uh, I don't really like a lot of found footage films, but the first one, I enjoyed it. I thought they handled it well, and it had added a nice documentary feel to it, uh, you know, because it was kind of a mockumentary type feel, and, and just in general, I really liked that feel, and so we go to the Hollywood version, just like they did with Blair Witch 2, and just like Blair Witch 2, you pretty much have a very weak film. Now, the strongest point in this film is Ashley Bell. She practically carries this entire, in fact, she does carry this entire film on her small shoulders with her talent of being able to go from innocent to evil, dark-looking, demonic, possessive person to confused look to, I mean, the range of emotions that she can do is fantastic. It's portrayed. You feel it. You feel what she's feeling. And she does very well. Unfortunately, she, the rest of this film, she's just got this really bad script that her character's in. I mean, all the other characters in this film seem like toss-offs. I mean, they're really, they're just, they're just there. You don't, you could give a rat's ass about these people. They're empty, and it's sad because you got people like Julia Gardner, who was great in uh, Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene, as well as uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. You, you know, you got you got David Jensen in here. You got Tara Riggs in here. You know, you got no slouches, but their characters just were like, meh. I I, I don't care, okay. And then the, it's a horror movie, okay. And yes, you're gonna get jump scares. And you get a lot of them within the first half of the film. And then those are abandoned for when we actually get to the meat of the story of what the hell is going on. And we get to the more creepy things happening to Nell. Um, you know, we get more story of what's going on and the, 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 the motivation behind why the demon is still terrorizing this poor young girl. But by the time you get to that point, you're just like... Finally, something's happening, and then what is happening is pretty lame. Why? PG frickin' 13 comes back and hurts a film that could have been more gritty, more gory, and just a lot more creepy, I think, with an R rating than a PG 13 rating. That, along with, uh, you know, music doesn't really, eh, you know, it's forgettable. It, just about all, everything about this film leads you to go, why was it really made in the first place, much less brought to the big screen? Ashley Bell is fantastic and about the only saving grace to this film. But, you know, when you got a director and writers that had nothing to do with the first one, you're going to get that. That's right, it's based off characters written by Huck. Botko and Andrew Gerland. So that's what you got. You got people who didn't deal with the original material at all, trying to make a sequel and, and just failing, I think, miserably. One and a half stubs, folks, in my book for The Last Exorcism Part 2. Wait for a rental. Fans of the first one, stick to the first one. Outside of the ending, I really enjoyed the first one. You can check out my review on my channel. But this one definitely is a forgettable film that is not worth your time, in my humble opinion. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep the tickets down.